If you can't get your vitamin D levels up even with high dose supplements, don't worry, I can help you. There's a fairly simple fix and it doesn't involve taking even more vitamin D. So to give you the most important info right away, the biggest reason is a magnesium deficiency. Your body needs magnesium at almost every step of vitamin D metabolism. If your magnesium is low, your body will pump the brakes on vitamin D activation. Why? Because turning vitamin D into its active form uses up magnesium dependent enzymes. If you push a lot of vitamin D into a magnesium deficient system, you can drain magnesium even further. Your body is protective and it doesn't want to make you feel even worse. So it keeps vitamin D activation modest until there's enough magnesium around to do the job safely. Here's what this looks like in real life. You take vitamin D and get muscle tightness, cramps, eye twitches, poor sleep, or a feeling of tired but wired after taking vitamin D supplements. You might even notice more sensitivity to stress or heart palpitations. What you want to do in such a case is to bring up magnesium first or at least at the same time as you're taking vitamin D supplements. So start with 300 to 400 milligrams of elemental magnesium per day from a quality supplement and split that intake into several smaller doses for better absorption. You can also add magnesium rich foods like pumpkin seeds, leafy greens or whole grains, but they alone usually won't do much if you're already deficient. Then go steady for two to four weeks and reassess how you feel. Many people find that once magnesium is in place, vitamin D starts to take much better. Some people will need a little more than the dose I just gave you, especially if they're taking a lot of vitamin D. So keep that in mind. Now, there are also other nutrients that vitamin D can drain, most notably potassium and vitamin A. So look at these once you're taking magnesium, but your vitamin D levels are still not increasing. Potassium should come from food first, especially cooked vegetables and some fruit. If you decide to supplement, start with a small dose of around 100 mg to 300 mg of potassium chloride or citrate and then work your way up and see how your body reacts. I wouldn't go over 1000 mg per day just from supplements and always make sure to take it in several doses, just like in the case of magnesium, because that way your body can filter out any excess. Now, in terms of vitamin A, vitamin D and vitamin A work together in the nucleus of your cell. They share partners in gene signaling. When you push vitamin D higher, your body will also use up more vitamin A to keep that balance steady. So the more vitamin D you take, the more vitamin A you need to balance it. Good sources of it are egg yolks, liver, fatty meat, and quality dairy if you tolerate it. If you want to supplement vitamin A, keep it conservative because more is definitely not better and it can be overdosed. A good option here would be cod liver oil, which naturally comes with both vitamin A and vitamin D. Great, besides these nutrients, the problem can sometimes also be absorption. Vitamin D is fat soluble. That means your gut needs to do a little dance with fat digestion, bile and packaging the vitamin so it can get into your bloodstream. Here's the simple flow behind this. So step one would be that you swallow vitamin D and the form matters. Oil-based drops or soft gels are usually better than dry powder. Also, taking vitamin D with a real meal is usually smarter than just with water because there will be more fat for the absorption. Then step two, the stomach phase. Here you need enough stomach acid for normal meal processing. Low stomach acid doesn't necessarily make vitamin D useless but weak digestion upstream often also means weak digestion downstreams. And clues for low stomach acid would be that you feel heavy after eating a lot of protein, lots of burping, or that feeling of food sitting in your stomach for too long. I have a video on supporting stomach acid levels naturally, so check that out if you're interested. It will be linked in the description. And then step three would be bile release from the gallbladder. Bile is the soap that lets fat and fat soluble vitamins mix with the watery fluids. Sluggish bile means poor absorption. And here clues would be pale or greasy stools and feeling very tired after fatty meals. I will also link resources on improving bile production. The final step is that vitamin D moves into the intestinal cells and gets packaged into chylomicrons, which go through the lymph and then into your blood. If you have intestinal inflammation or gut conditions like celiac disease, Crohn's, SIBO, or pancreatic enzyme insufficiency, then this step could also suffer. 
Because most of these steps involve all kinds of nutrient absorption and not just vitamin D, it makes sense to work on them even if this isn't the main cause of your levels. On top of all this, there are also two more factors that you can look at. These usually aren't the most common, but can also play a small role in vitamin D levels. One would be activation. You see, the liver turns vitamin D into 25-hydroxyvitamin D, which is the main thing that your blood tests measure. If the liver is struggling from things like fatty liver, high inflammation, poor overall protein intake or something similar, then this step can slow down. Signs can be subtle, so things like chronic fatigue, liver pain after big meals, or abnormal liver enzymes. And if this is the case, then obviously work on liver health. The same applies to your kidneys, which are needed to then turn everything into the fully active hormone 125-dihydroxyvitamin D. If kidney function is low, activation also drops. Again, these conversion bottlenecks are usually not the first place to look, but keep them in mind if nothing else explains it. You also want to be aware of genetic factors, which explain why some people need more vitamin D to move the needle. First are VDR polymorphisms. VDR is the vitamin D receptor. Different versions of this gene can change how sensitive your cells are to vitamin D. And some people just need higher intakes or longer time to get the same clinical effect. You also have CYP2R1 variations. And this is the main liver enzyme that makes 25-hydroxyvitamin D. If it's less efficient, then your body levels can rise more slowly, even with a decent dose. There is also a gene that encodes the kidney enzyme that makes the active 125-dihydroxyvitamin D. So same here, variations can affect the efficiency of all of this. And lastly, you have your GC gene. You see, most vitamin D in your blood is carried by a transport protein coded by this gene. Different versions change how tightly vitamin D is bound and how much free vitamin D you have. This means your total blood vitamin D might look lower on paper, even if the free biologically available fraction is okay. That's why in tricky cases, some practitioners check free vitamin D in addition to total. Okay, so I know this was a very long list, but again, in most cases, it's really just a magnesium deficiency. So many people are low in magnesium without knowing it, and getting things up will improve many health markers, not just your vitamin D levels. Just keep in mind that fixing a magnesium deficiency can take a while, and you want to give it some time before you retest your vitamin D. The potential for vitamin D to deplete other nutrients is also why I'm not a big fan of superdosing it in crazy high doses every day. You might feel better for a while, but after a few months, other deficiencies will start to show up, and you run into other problems that you didn't have before. The goal is always to balance your nutrients and giving your body what it needs to self-regulate. Before I end this video, please don't forget to check out the description for related videos, more free resources, and my programs. They will help you if you're looking for more tutorials on diet planning, supplementation, or topics like chronic fatigue recovery. There are also a lot of beginner mistakes I see people making all the time, and they will help you avoid those. For more info, just open the description. It will all be found there.